Make it transformational, not transactional. That's hospitality. It's not just having the best wine list. It's about the customer experience. Transformational versus transactional. The following is a Big Sky Economic Development production. It's Mars B. And Cavo. And this is The Vault at 201 North Broadway. A business podcast. Where we bring you entrepreneurs, small business owners, and community leaders of Montana. To share their stories, expertise, industry insights, and strategies. And we are sharing them all with you every single week. You don't want to miss this. Learn how to better start, manage, and grow your business. And your leadership style. Tangible takeaways to save you time and improve whatever it is that you're working on. You're listening to The Vault. Thank you to the Small Business Development Center for sponsoring The Vault at 201 North Broadway. The Small Business Development Center offers free personalized support from business plans to financial projections and beyond empowering small businesses to thrive. Reach out to us at BigSkyEconomicDevelopment.org. So Abby, you own one of our favorite businesses in Billings, City Vineyard. You get brought up multiple times on the podcast when people are like, what's your favorite thing to do in Billings? City Vineyard is like top of mind for not only myself, but others. And we've just been captivated by the brand you've built with City Vineyard. So we're really excited to have you on to share your story with us. Awesome. Thank you. And, you know, it's a family business. So my husband came over. He was a deputy county attorney, worked with Scott Twido oh, wow. for, a long, okay. for 11 years. Then he came over with me because uh, my mom actually is the founder, Becky Reno. Mm-hmm. So she obviously had a you know, City Brew Coffee. And yes. then before that, she had Video Library. Oh, wow. So she's a serial entrepreneur. <laughs> so um, she's still involved quite a bit. And we're so happy to have her wisdom and calmness when things get crazy. <laughs> so, but yeah, I was happy to come on board when I did and um, move the location and we're at where we're at now, and we open in Bozeman in June, so we'll have oh, our second location. Exciting. Yeah, we're really excited. It's like the clock is ticking, though. You know, that, it's like I they, bet it doesn't feel far away at all. No, no. <laughs> and you know, going through December, it was like, okay, I'm not going to respond to anything for the new store because it was, you know, the holidays yeah, are crazy yeah. for retail. But yeah, now it's like we're rocking and rolling. Now it's That's go so time. Exciting. Yeah. <laughs> so it sounds like then you grew up in an entrepreneurial family. Yes. Do you want to, like, when did your mom found City Vineyard, City Brew, all yeah. of video, those companies? You say Video Lab? Video Library. Library. So we were, remember Blockbuster? Yes. Back, yeah. So she started Video Library, I think it was, oh, before 80, so 78 probably. Oh, wow. So she was really young, um, and uh, the VCRs had just come out. Mm-hmm. So my dad, actually, and they were together at the time, he had a video, or he had a, um, store where they had like oh speakers and they did car stereo stuff oh, okay. and he's like hey this thing called a vcr came out and there's gonna be like it's called a vhs and she's like well there's nowhere to get these and um so anyway so she was really young in her early 20s then and sold that business in 2001 to movie gallery or two was 2002 um, back in 98, she started City Brew at the time because she traveled a lot for work for Video Library. And she's like, hey, I go to this place. Um, I think at the time there was like Tully's and mm-hmm. then Pete's Coffee and then Starbucks too. And was like, I think that, you know, this could be like a thing. Um, and we we're. <laughs> she was know, right. She was <laughs> right. Go figure. Yeah. So, because coffee really until then, I mean, like we have a lot of coffee shops now mm-hmm. locally, but that probably was like. We didn't have any. No, it was cutting edge. I remember. Like holiday coffee at the gas station. Right, yeah. right. So Mountain Mud and us kind of started at the same time. And they obviously had kiosks and we had brick and mortar. Um, in an old store number one for VL, we had, uh, she'd moved that location down. And so she had some empty space uh, for a place she was uh, renting. And she's like, well, we'll do the first store here because my corporate offices are here so I can be involved and see how it goes. So um, I was employee number two. I was, I was 16. I was, you know, I'd worked at video library and I'm like, oh my gosh, the coffee sounds so cool. <laughs> Not that renting movies wasn't, but um, totally different. So yeah. And then in 2000, in the same building, uh, she started uh, a City Vineyard. 
So it's been wow. a fun journey with her. And Wow, I guess I didn't realize that City Brew and City Vineyard started really close to one another. Yeah, um, yeah. I didn't, I thought City Vineyard came years and years after City Brew was established. Yeah, no, it's uh, 2000. I did, it was like, we had to have it open because of the license by the end of the year in 2000. And so oh, wow. she was hustling to get that girl open by December <laughs> wow. 31st. So what led her to open City Vineyard. So she had, um, she's just incredibly intelligent and business savvy. And she had put her name in a lottery because of how the licensing yeah. works. And she won the license. Wow. And to, which is keep, so exciting. Which is so exciting. <laughs> and, but you had to open a business within 12 months. Yes. And so she was like, oh my gosh. And she loved wine and uh, didn't know a ton about it, but knew she knew herself, you know, and could make it work. So yes, door number one is where Peta Pitt and D.A. Davidson was. Same with City Brew. Store number one City Brew was where the D.A. Davidson oh, wow. is. Um, wow. Like yeah. right across the street from us. Or, oh. or D.A. Davidson. Or, um, oh, wait. The yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm getting it. 2228 Grand Avenue. Okay. So, yeah. So oh, really fun. Oh my gosh. That's, where did the name come from? Because I mean, it's been really like City Brew, City Vin. Yeah. You know, she had... Um, a great team of uh, people who they did a brainstorming session and you know, it. that's how, I mean, really it was it's, nothing crazy. They just were like, Hey, we like these names and this sounds and great and stuck. And then city vineyard, you know, just was natural after city brew. So, mm -hmm. yeah. Oh, I love it. And what was your, per so you were in high school when you started working mm -hmm. at city brew. Mm -hmm. Did you go away? Did you stay? What was that? Yeah. pathway for you. Yeah. So I went to college at U of M, University okay. of Montana. And so I graduated high school in 01 and then went to Missoula, came home, you know, during the summers to work with my mom and, you know, gain any experience I could. And then uh, after college, I actually moved to San Francisco and worked for Nordstrom's. Oh, cool. <gasps> yeah. I love Nordstrom the I rack. Did, yeah, I know. Um, <laughs> did you love it? I, like, you know, I think that after working for a family business and learning to grind, corporate, that kind of corporate job taught me so much, taught me what I liked and didn't like. <laughs> um, and the city was huge and it was expensive. So she ended up coming down and saying, hey, why don't you just come back? And so we had our, we had a warehouse for City Brew where we distributed our own dry goods and cups and things like that. So she stuck me in the warehouse for a long time. <laughs> <laughs> so I can drive a dolly. I can move pallets. Um, great skills to have, I guess. Yeah. But yeah. And then it kind of just went from there. And what, what, where did it go from there? So I then, so I worked in the warehouse and then I took over, um, you know, the retail division was growing a lot and she started the roasting division in I think 2003. So she started roasting right before I came home from college. And yeah, and she just, I just was helping wherever I could. And then I ended up taking over the retail division. So I was the director of operations. And then when we were doing the acquisition with CIC, so we, we sold to a venture capital company out of Salt Lake. And during that acquisition process, I was winding my time down with them. And then um, she's like, hey, what about City Vineyard? Like, that might be something you want to do. And I didn't know anything about wine. So <laughs> did you like wine? I liked it. Okay. Okay. That's <laughs> helpful. Yeah. Don't yeah, we you know. all like wine? Yeah. Yeah. So that was, you know, gosh, it'll be nine, eight and a half years ago. And so I jumped in and said, yeah, let's try it out. And my husband, I was like, this is way different. And we didn't have infrastructure. It was one store. So yeah. my husband came over from the County with me too. And we're like, let's just do this together and see if we can figure it out. And then we built the new store and yeah. How long um, were you guys operating city Vin at the old location before you guys moved it to your, um, yeah. So location? we've actually moved it twice okay, because the concept needs to evolve and change and grow as the times do. So, uh, we moved, let's see here. We had our store number one at, you know, 22, 28 grand. Then we moved it to, um, a building that Becky actually owns on 17th and grand where there was a city vineyard city brew. Yes. It's yep. a T-Mobile now, right? T-Mobile now. Yes. And then eight years ago, we moved it to the location we have now um, uh, at 1335 Golden Valley Circle. So you said something really important is you have to grow with the times, right? Absolutely. And so can, can you talk to me about how you were like, okay, it is time for us to make this next transition. What, what were those thoughts going through your mind? How did you know? Because um, I think there's a lot of businesses that kind of get stuck in that that mm -hmm. portion, and they they go, well, it's working right now, mm -hmm. um, and then they don't they miss that moment, right? You know, I, I just think you need to see what other like businesses are doing 
um, what your customers are asking for. We've really, you know, before I took over the um, manager at the time, you know, she was just focused on the retail side of the business. And we had a teeny little tasting lounge, like 12 seats. And so we didn't, we weren't really in the bar business then. So, you know, we had the opportunity to move the location. And I said, we got, you know, we need a more modern design. So we worked with James Cordenroy with a Architecture. He changed our look and feel. And he is phenomenal. I adore, just they, they nailed every detail when we went to change our concept. So a uh, bigger bar, bigger on-premise because on-premise, you know, obviously the margins are different than off-premise and um, harder to run, more labor, um, different, you know, different customer interaction, you know, yeah. versus a 10-minute I'm helping you find a glass or a bottle. You're in the bar with them for an hour to two hours to three hours helping, you know, serve them. Is it So that's different too and obviously later nights and those kinds of things. So, uh, and I was willing, you know, I was young at the time. I'm like, oh man, no, let's try this. Let's do it. So I went from working early mornings to late nights. <laughs> yeah, what a transition there. Oh man, I tell you what, and I traveled for work, you know, 70% of the time uh, with City Bro. So I learned to live at home with my husband and my dog. And that was a transition too, you know, they're like, whoa, you're not normally here. Like, Usually Normally, Monday and come home Thursday or Friday. What what are you doing? Like messing up our flow. So uh, we not only, I was never home. We started working together and living at home full time. So that was a, and we're still married. We made it and through like that. That's great. That is, great. <laughs> <laughs> that is a feat in itself. Oh man. Yeah. <laughs> so it sounds like you, I mean, there were a lot of growing things and you guys have just been growing, growing, growing. What Are there some moments that really stand out to you that were pivotal in in those transitions and those growth moments. Yeah. yeah. I, you know, back, gosh, when we first opened our store, it'll be eight years in July the, wow. at the new location. I we can't believe it's been that I long. No, that's what everybody says. It's so funny when oh we went gosh. to, had to renew the lease last year, like, oh my gosh, it blinked. <laughs> Cause when you're busy, you know, it's like yeah. time flies and really putting together, I didn't understand the food concept that was needed with wine. So we had a teeny little kitchen. We weren't doing a ton of food. We had like mainly charcuterie and cheese, but really nothing else. No brunch, no salads. I no. love your brunch. Thank you. Your salads, your charcuterie, your pretzel your, bites, beer oh, dip, et cetera. Oh, yeah. No, yeah. You know, so I didn't, you know, when we first opened, I was like, well, people are coming for a glass or maybe two, but then they're leaving customer time stay, you know, cause you're really looking at your numbers. Yeah. Yeah. Your turns. Yeah. Yeah. Your turns. And, um, that was something, you know, my mom, you know, obviously, uh, is a data geek and a numbers freak. And so she's like, where, what, what, you know, so like looking at the numbers, how can we get more out of the customers we have? And so I never wanted to have a kitchen. <laughs> I am not a, you know, I'm not a <laughs> chef by any means, but, uh, so we expanded the food program, which then really changed our world with getting people to stay, yeah. getting people to come mm -hmm. in earlier. Uh, so, you know, hire great people who know more than you can have, you know, some I, chefs. Your that we staff is with. always amazing. Oh, thank you. They are. Well, they're the, they're the reason I'm here. You know, <laughs> you know, we, you know, you can stand in an ivory tower, but and let, the boots on the ground are who make it happen every day. And I'm so fortunate to have the best team. I'm so fortunate. So you said going in, you didn't know much about wine, mm -hmm. but if I'm not mistaken, you're a, and I don't know a lot. Sommelier? <laughs> is it Sommelier? Sommelier. Sommelier. Yes. And, yeah. and you travel too with this job a little bit. A little bit. Yeah. 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 So gosh, I remember, um, you know, I've told this story to some people who have changed careers and come to me crying and they're like, oh, you know, I'm like, I did it too. You know, I used to cry. I literally every day, cause you go from being the expert yeah. at the position you're in to being the new guy and not having any history or knowledge. And so, you know, I literally cried almost every night for like six months when, when we first took over because I didn't know the difference between Burgundy and Bordeaux. Yeah. I didn't know, you know, there's just, I didn't know the different regions and why flavors in this region taste different from this region. And if you come in and you want a light bodied red, blah, blah, blah. I had no idea how to help Here's you. Here's a nice red blend. <laughs> I exactly. need to that really quick. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So, you know, I studied and learned and I had to be disciplined and, um, you know, I, I had to just hit the books and I hadn't studied, you know, or had to do anything since college. <laughs> and I was like, oh my gosh, am I going to fail this written test? You know, <laughs> had my note cards and gosh, it was, uh, but I'm so glad because it, it made me better. And, it, you know, I know more, you know, and with wine, 
gosh, you, you learn 1%, you know, gosh, I don't know anything. And then you learn a little more and you're like, I really don't know any, you know, so this industry is so fun because it continually grows and changes and you have to have to be on top of what is changing, what producers are changing, who's being bought by whom. And it's so fun and it's a cultural thing, you know? So my husband and I went to Italy this last year and I'd never been and Oh, it's just, it pulls it all together. When Everybody you're... drinks wine in Italy. Oh, it's man. Served break meals. Yeah. Where did you go? Where did you go? So we went, we flew into Venice, and then we spent time in Piedmont in a, a little uh, town called Pernu, and went to Barolo and, you know, met some amazing people, and then we ended in Tuscany, and Aww. so that was cool, too. Magical. But met different producers, and, and I think the warmth and the kindness and the culture you can kind of get through reading the tech notes and like doing, you know, looking on YouTube, but being there and like feeling it, oh man, it is life changing. Oh gosh. So was that a vacation or were you guys, are those some of the wines you carry? So yeah, so it was a vacation for sure. It was for uh, my birthday and then my my best girlfriend who was also at the same birthday came with me halfway through. Yeah, it was a vacay, but we met some of our favorite producers and you know, it's amazing how much time, you know, you know, these people are so busy and they're like, oh no, you love our wine? Yes. And you know, like, well, let's sit and talk. I mean, we went to one place called um, Giagiano in Tuscany and I, you know, Andre is so famous to us. You know, he's like an icon and he's with the Kermit Lynch portfolio and he, they made, you know, he made time and spent like three hours with us and we walked all through the vineyards and oh man, it was just such a wonderful experience and you just never... You know, these people are so famous to you in your mind. And we met Chiara Basca with a, she has a, you know, in Barolo. And we went all through in her dirty work truck. And she's just (laughs) like, I don't need nothing fancy. And, you know, so she took us all through the vineyards and, you know, took us to lunch. And she spent four hours with us. And she was the first female winemaker in Barolo. So she really talked about, you know, defeating norms and what she had to do to get in with the men. And um, so anyways, I mean, you just learn, you come back and you're different. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah, absolutely. That's really impactful and magical. Yeah, so fun. Um, I do have a question for you because you mentioned this before is you have a great team. Oh, yeah. Um, How do you how do you have a great team? Like what are some of the traits that you look for when you're hiring and um, what kind of culture do you are you building over there? Yeah. You know, I always say we uh, I, I hire the personality and I can Anybody can learn anything and you can train anybody to do anything pretty much. But so there's some, you know, in the interview process that they have, if they, you can kind of tell if they have it as far as a personality. Yeah. Um, yeah. I mean, if, you, if you're quiet and don't make eye contact and, you know, reserved, you, you know, we're in sales, whether you're in the bar, you're in the store, you're in sales. So that's probably not a personality, <laughs> you know, <laughs> we're gonna, we're gonna look for. Um, yeah. You know, and I like, you know, Myself and I have my general manager, Ashley Nugens, and she came from, um, you know, different retail background and um, more luxury. And, you know, it's nice to work with people who have different skill sets and have different talents. And so uh, I really look for that, too. I don't I don't want to hire a me. Oh, no. you know, I want to hire somebody that has a completely different skill set. Yeah, they're going to complement mm-hmm. each other. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And, and it, I love the personality. Yeah. Hire for the personality, the person that's going to be the right fit yeah. and then train them. Oh, yeah. That's awesome. I like that. And so on that, something that we think about, I think about when I think of City Vineyard is hospitality. Oh, absolutely. Because you are taking such great care. Like, you know, when you walk in the door, you can just feel it, whether you're buying uh, a bottle or oh, buying Oh, yeah, you're cheese, greeted within less than 30 seconds. Or you're going to the bar. What are some of those hospitality things that are really important to you? Yeah, I, you know, um, Becky, my mom, is huge, huge on it, too. So, you know, she ingrained it in in me from a young (laughs) age. But, you know, your customers want to be felt. And, like, they they want you to know they're there. They're our focus. They're the 100%. Whether I have to finish a wine order or the phone's ringing, you know, that's your focus. Because the customer's who pays the bills, not, not this delivery that's coming in or someone's calling out and you're stressed about that. It's like, you know, just really making sure they're the reason we're there. So from the time they park in the parking lot, you know, the exterior of the building should be good. Then when they walk in the building, they should be greeted with a friendly greeting. Um, Even if you can't approach them right away, the eye contact, the smile, the nonverbal is really important. So, you know, from the time they sit down to the time they get the first class, you know, it's, 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 um, it never ends. 
you have a training process that your team goes through? To oh, yeah. Be, because, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. And, and you know, there's some people who just don't want to do it and they don't, they come to work and they're wearing it on whatever happened to them before work yep. they bring in and we're like, oh, no, no, not here. You know, that's yeah. uh, whatever a terrible thing or you wrecked your car or whatever, you know, uh, <laughs> you, you're in this building now, you cross the threshold and that has to go out the window because it's not about you anymore. It's about them. It's about the customer. Disney has a uh, really interesting, and I don't know um, if you know this or not, mm-hmm. but uh, Disney has an arch way. Mm-hmm. And when their team uh, cast members, they call them cast members, when their cast members cross through that archway, they're on, on. Uh, and yep. they know. Mm-hmm. And, and so you leave everything behind. You're in character. You're on. Yep. When you cross back through is when you can, you know, not be on mm-hmm. anymore, right? You yep. can turn it off. Yep. And so it's a really interesting um, way. And they do that in their call centers. They, you know, they have that piece. And so then Mm -hmm. they know I'm stepping through this. Mm -hmm. I know I'm on, Mm -hmm. this is my, I'm, I'm on job now. (laughs) Yeah. And you know, and, and that's great analogy. And that's what we say. Once that door opens and you're through it. Yeah. Yeah. You turn it on. And you know, if you have people who can't and you can tell they got to go. Yeah. You know, so Mm -hmm. I think being fearless in, being like, hey, you're clearly not able to do this today. Go ahead and head home. We'll, we'll get your ship covered. Or, you know, there's got to be repercussions if you're coming in and you're not on. Yeah. You know, it's, yeah. And, and so having those hard conversations, which nobody wants to have. I it. hate them. I <laughs> avoid them. Like the play, you know, <laughs> and then I can see like, oh, they went to the table and she didn't smile or she put the glass down and didn't say, oh, my, oh, you know, it's like, okay, okay, okay. Mm-hmm. It's time to go, time to go. And, <laughs> and I have to say, I give my GM, Ashley, tons of credit because she is fearless. <laughs> I mean, she will have those just in the moment, take care of it. She's not emotional, which I think is really, we have a good yin and yang because oh, nice. sometimes I'm overly emotional. I'm like, oh, you know, and she's like, oh, calm down. It's good. And she can just, you know. I need to I'm, go pick her brain because oh, I hate she's, those conversations. She's, yeah. But I think picking it up, I think it's really important, like right when you see it. Yeah. So that it's not like you could just keep a laundry list of what they did wrong, oh. but oh, directing it in the moment. Oh, so. In a way that it's like, we love you. We're not trying, but this has to be fixed. Right. And, and, you know, nobody wants to work for four hours and then be like, I was doing that wrong for four hours or, and you didn't, you hit, and you didn't tell me. Yeah, exactly. We have, um, there's a lot of data behind this, but, um, the yearly evaluations, mm-hmm. the annual evaluations that people get. And then that's when they bring that laundry list out and they're like, you've, I've been doing this wrong for a year. Mm-hmm. And now, I mean, that, creates so much issues uh, because that employee doesn't feel like they've been doing a good job. Mm -hmm. They've got animosity. Like, why didn't you tell me? I Mm -hmm. could have corrected this. They're in that habit now. Then you are like, I really don't like them. They're not doing a good job. So doing it in the moment is Mm -hmm. actually probably even healthier for your culture than um, waiting. And if I'm doing something, you know, I would want to know. Um, and my GM can be fearless in telling me, hey, we told the team to do it this way last week. So, and you accidentally did it this, you know, I'm like, oh my gosh, I totally see that. Thank you so much. <laughs> yeah. or, you know, um, and just being open. I think having openness, if, if something isn't working, if there's a process that we've created for whatever reason and it isn't working, I want to know. And my team, I, we want to make it better for everyone. If, it gets, if it's better for us as the team, yeah. it translates into the customer. You know, if they can come in and everybody can leave their at the door and it's like this is their safe place and we're all positive, you know, it it it, it mm-hmm. bleeds into who you want it to bleed into. But unfortunately, if you let the bad stuff in and you don't address it, that yeah. also bleeds to your customers. So yeah, um, everybody's had that experience where they've yeah. gone somewhere and they weren't greeted or maybe someone slammed something down. And and it may not even be that you did anything to them. That mm-hmm. could be that table over right. there upset mm-hmm. them, but it is, is now transitioning mm-hmm. to all of the other people. Oh, yeah. My favorite thing is when you go into a place and, and you know, you sit and you're waiting, waiting, you know, and then you finally get approached and they're like, oh gosh, sorry, I have a huge blah, blah, blah over there. And, and you're like, anyway, um, I, so what do you want? Because I'm going to get this right away because their food's about to come. And you're just like, whoa, that table isn't my problem. Yes. You know? Yeah. And of course, you always have something that comes up where you're like, I'm getting rocked right now. So it's like <laughs> the team to come to us to make sure we have proper management presence. And we're not perfect. We mess up. There's times where we haven't staffed right, where it was like, hey, it's a holiday and blah, blah, blah. So you get busier later. And then the team is like, oh, no, you know, so 
and you don't staff right, but then then the net you make a note of it, and then the next Memorial Day or whatever it is, you fix it. Yeah, yeah. You know, because you can't bat a thousand, but man, can you try? But mm -hmm. the team needs you need to create a culture of openness. So the team feels comfortable coming and saying, hey, we got murdered last night, like in a bad way. Um, you had so-and-so off at this time, then this person got cut at this time. And man, we just, we struggled and it was hard to keep up and keep our standards where they were. It's like, okay, well, thank you so much for your feedback. Let's fix that. And like, and actually fixing it and actually doing it or, you know, just things like that where you can help be a part of the process to make it better. What are some of those things? Because it, you know, it sounds... It's like you guys have that, but how did you get to that point? Like, what are some of those things where your team does feel comfortable in talking to you or, because it sounds like they, they'll tell you, you guys fix it, address mm -hmm. it. And mm -hmm. so that's building great trust. But what are some of those cultural things for you guys to keep yeah. that service at such a high level? And yeah. that is so open, right? Because yeah. they can know they can come to you and they can say, Hey, Abby, we were murdered last night. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> you know, ask for feedback. How did it go? Hey, gosh, I saw your guys' numbers. Oh, my goodness. Great job. How'd it go? And then they're like, oh, man, well, we all made money, but oh, gosh, you know. So, so soliciting feedback, and I can tell you, you don't want all the feedback. No. But yeah. But it's not about what I want. You know, it's about what's best for the business. And sometimes oh, I have I to, like, that. listen to it. And then sit on it and not respond or react. Yep. I can then like process it and then I can come up with a plan. But um, you don't always want the, the feedback or like you change the dress code and so-and-so's, you know, there, there's things that feedback that we can make changes and be positive. And then you do have to factor in the 1%. There's yep. always going to be the 1% that... Yeah. is going to complain about something or isn't going to be super happy with something. You're but, Debbie Downers. Yeah, but you can't you, you can't change strategy by the 1%. No. No, you know? and it's like for the whole greater good of City Vineyard. Right, right. Yeah. That's right. what I tell people is like when you read reviews, know that most mm -hmm. of the time the people that are taking the time to write reviews are mm -hmm. they had an amazing experience or they had a terrible experience yep. and they're going to tell everybody about it. Right. So you really have to filter through and go, is there common mm -hmm. or is it just, oh, um, they brought me a red wine and I didn't really like it. And then you find out they don't even really like wine. Right. You know, <laughs> and, and that's I'm so glad you brought that up because. Oh man, that happens where it's like, well, we're a wine bar. Um, we don't have vodka. And, and you know, there's just people you can't make happy. Oh, no. Yeah. And, and you can't take it personal. And nope. I, and that's one thing you have to tell the team is, is, you know, I know so-and-so comes in, they're tough, you know, and, and, and you don't take it personal or they give you feedback. Don't take it personal. Take it. Can we make the situation better? Can we grow somehow from this? Yes or no, and then and then just be done with it. Close that chat, you know, move on. Oh, I love because that. Because it's, you know, sometimes, you, you know, we work in customer service and it's we're customer hard. facing, and it's hard, and especially during the holidays in the store. Man, my retail team, and, and I'm out there with them too, but some it is, it can be extremely difficult to help people who don't want to be helped. Yes. And and it's not that they don't want, like, help with wine, but they're they're just unhappy people. You know, and, and they're and, taking their things that happened earlier absolutely. out on. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. And and so, you know, you just swallow it. You got to okay, kill them with that kindness. Go. And kill them with kindness. Do your best. Yeah. And that's what, and if that's, and, yeah, and if they're still unhappy, hey, do. I did my best. I did everything I could do in that situation. Chapter close. Move on. We helped, you helped 30 amazing people today that were awesome. Focus on those. Don't focus on the one, you know, bad one. Yeah. It's and one second negative. versus 30 seconds, right? Totally, like, totally. And I know it's hard. It's hard for me sometimes when you, you know, get feedback from a customer that, you know, whatever, and you try <laughs> to make the situation the best you can and you take care of them in every way you can. But sometimes you just can't make them happy and you did your best. So, so are there other tips that you have like for businesses or maybe someone looking to start a business, individuals, um, mm -hmm. that are tips to help differentiate themselves with th hospitality mm -hmm. and great service. Mm -hmm. I think just know what hospitality is. It's not just having the best wine list or the best food. It's about the customer experience. There was a consultant we worked with at, at City Brew for a while, and he said, uh, and, and it always stuck with me, and he said, Give them transformational service because our customer point times are like 30 seconds, you know, very oh, yeah. different than what I do now. Make it transformational, not transactional. 
So knowing mm-hmm. the difference between something like that and what, what would that mean to you as a consumer really helped me. Okay, that's hospitality. That's not a great product quickly, whatever. That's hospitality. That's actually changing the environment that you're making for your customer. So oh, yeah. Transformational versus transactional. Like so can you give our listeners who are in that same realm, mm-hmm. give them some examples of what that that kind of difference would be? Would be. Yeah. 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 So uh, greeting and thanking. Yeah. Being acknowledged when you walk into a retail establishment, making eye contact, smiling. What can we do for you today versus how can I help? You know, just how you speak and and really listening, really listen to them. You know, don't just put like, you know, eyes up here and, you know, you're checking them out and you're not having a conversation. How's your afternoon going? Oh, great. This is a great bottle. I love this one. Or, you know, what are your plans? You know, just like making it calm and happy and, 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 you know, from the bar perspective, making them just comfortable. What, what do they want? Deliver it on it. But you have to just, you have to make it an experience. Absolutely. Because Mm -hmm. there's places you go that are just transactional. They come, they bring your wine, they bring your food. There's no conversation. They didn't ask you if you like. It's like McDonald's, right? Yeah. And, but, and, but kudos to McDonald's, man. You know what you're going to get when you go and you get it. Yep. Yep. And, and so you, you know, so you don't, you're not going there for some, you know, transformational service or anything. You go there it meets expectation, you know, and, and they're, and they're a great company. But I think that, you know, really that transformational service, I always think of myself, what would I want? Yeah. You know, I want a server to come over and, and smile and be slow, not talk too fast, not move too fast. Mm -hmm. That's something that I still struggle with myself is being. Uh, Yes. I'm a very fast talker too. So yeah. So it's like, ah, I was like, slow down, slow down. I'm in my mind. I'm like, slow down, slow down, slow down. <laughs> I'm always like, take a deep breath. Yeah. Take yeah. a deep breath. And it's like, you know, don't rush them. That's their time. There's some people who want to be in and out. They only have an hour. Make sure that happens for them. There's some people who want to take their time and have an afternoon or have an evening. Give that to them. I feel like I've had multiple <laughs> moments with friends, groups of friends, whatever, where it's like, oh, we'll just go for a drink. For and a then drink. we're there until you close. And I'm like, well, here we what all are. What happened here? We're on our third <laughs> like, charcuterie oh board. And- <laughs> Wonderful. That's the goal. I'm like, That's the we goal. Just, it's like it just happens, but it's such a great environment. Even I was in there with like, I'm like, who? I was just in there recently again. And I think it was your sister. Yeah. Yeah. And, she, you know, I think you guys were out of something, but she's like, here, I brought you a sample of this other if mm-hmm. you want to try it. Mm-hmm. And so we did. We got yeah. it. We got two glasses each exactly. of it. And But I think having that just mm-hmm. like giving those recommendations mm-hmm. or, or bringing that little thing just mm-hmm. makes us feel special and mm-hmm. taken care of. Mm-hmm. Well, my answer. So I, I'll tell you, me and my boyfriend have very different wine tastes. I'm mm-hmm. a very sweeter wine. I like Moscato's um, and he likes... Sh- Butter, buttery Chardonnays. <laughs> um, so he's like a Chardonnay person. And so that's very too mm-hmm. different. So we, with our, um, our waitress, she, we told her both of our likes mm-hmm. and she brought us a wine that both of us enjoyed. Awesome. Good. And I was like, who would have known? I never would have thought there would be a place that we could meet in the middle. <laughs> yep. Yeah. And that's, and that's great. And, and again, you know, with, with our staff and, and we always encourage our team to sample customers. If they don't know if they like this, this, or that, or the differences between the, bring them samples, you know, and obviously we incur costs there, but it changes the game for the customer. I can't tell you how many times I'll look at a list and I'm like, oh, I wonder what that tastes like. Or for me, sometimes I'm like, I wonder how long it's been open. Oh yeah. <laughs> you know, and I'll, I'll spend 15, $20 on a glass of wine and I, you know, maybe it's cause I'm only going to have one, but I want it to be one good one. And if they, you know, if I can get a sample of something and that's the differentiator for us in our store with the license we have, we can sample customers on wine. Oh, so mm -hmm. if you come in, um, Marcel comes in and she says, okay, I've got my, my mother-in-law and my grandma are coming over for dinner and I'm making blah, blah, blah. And I know my grandma likes this, but my mother-in-law likes this, like help me, you know, we can be like, okay, well, here's a couple that we think I'm going to give you a sample of this and this. And then you kind of tell me what direction you want us to go, Mm -hmm. what, what you would like or what you prefer. And so for us, and you know, our license is expensive. It's um, not just a cabaret; it's a bigger license, and so it's so important because that is experiential yeah, service, absolutely. right? That's transformational, not mm-hmm. transactional. You could come in and say, "Oh, I like this," and they like that. And I'm like, "Well, here you go." Yep. Oh, okay. Uh, I hope I like it. You know, <laughs> I'm just uh, I just money. spend forty bucks money. on a bottle exactly. of wine. You know? Exactly, and that's a lot of money. I, you know, I went from a a, a world 
before I came to City Vineyard where our average transaction was, you know, under $10. Yep. And it's way more than that, you know, where I'm at now. So I really appreciate people who, you know, they're going out of their way to give me business. When they walk in, they've chosen City Vineyard already. They're yeah. through the door. Yep. Now we got to take care of them, you know? And so we're so fortunate and, 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 it, and it's not lost on me that they chose us for a reason. So let's make sure we hold up our end of the bargain. That's really, I like. So because you guys get, you have a lot of, uh, you have both sides. Mm -hmm. Where do you get inspiration to do new things and then build out your food menus because mm -hmm. they change a little bit and, yeah. and to add brunch, where are you getting your inspiration? Yeah, you know, and I think that's where traveling comes in, right? To, uh, you know, I was so fortunate in my younger years to get to, obviously, my mom is wildly entrepreneurial and, you know, throw 10 things against the wall, let's see what <laughs> hits, I got to try new stuff, but also traveling, eating out, going places, trying new things, you know, and I tend here to go to the same restaurant and eat the same thing, you know, but when I uh, travel, I'm like, okay, we're going to go here, here, and here, this is like a totally different thing I would never normally do. Customer shop, like shopping your competitors is so important because it makes you look at your business different. You know, mm -hmm. maybe it's not truly a competitor. Maybe it's a Michelin star restaurant in Piedmont that you get to go to. It's like a chance in a lifetime. Like, what do they nail? What can I transfer from this experience into my business? Yeah. Um, and just, you're always looking at opportunities. You're never, you don't, like, it's never really off, mm -hmm. you know? And then what's it like working? So you said your husband works with you too. Yeah. <laughs> what's that dynamic for you guys? Because now it's years down the road mm -hmm. from this experience. Mm -hmm. um, what's that like? So I, when, when people ask, I'm always like, we do different things yeah. because um, <laughs> you need to. I think uh, we have different skill sets. He's obviously an attorney. So, you know. Uh -huh. I'm definitely not that. I, you know, <laughs> he spells really well. I'm a terrible speller. Me too. So Thank God for nice. autocorrect. Oh my goodness, yes. <laughs> um, but yeah, you know, it, it's been so great, and we do different things. We have different hours. Uh, we try to have that kind of balance. And you know, he's like a super happy-go-lucky, like easygoing mm -hmm. guy, and I'm more intense. So <laughs> I think I found a good partner. Really, not knowing it before, you know, it's like, oh, we're married now. But it's, uh, you know, it's challenging for sure. There's times where I'm like, I need to walk away from you and, or I say something and our GM's like, okay, just walk away. Don't say what you're thinking because it'll probably hurt his feelings, you know, because uh, <laughs> we're just so intense. But uh, or I'm intense and he's more laid back. So uh, but what's great with our he has an amazing palate um, and he didn't drink wine before at all. He was oh, wow. a, a beer guy. A beer and, guy your guy but you know some of the skills from being an attorney have tra transferred lovely uh photographic memory so it can be somebody can go come in and be like okay I had this bottle I had a fish on it it was blah 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 it's like oh I think I know what it is you know? and <laughs> for me uh-uh you know it's like I don't I have no idea um I'm on yeah. google wine bottle with yeah. fish on label yeah exactly exactly <laughs> you that for you. yeah or you know and, and he just has a really good palate too so and he can remember hey Abby we had this wine six years ago at such and such conference on blah, blah, blah. I'm like, oh, I, st I still oh don't remember, gosh. but thank you so much for telling me that. It's still gone, right? But yeah, different skill sets, I think is really nice. So do you find that what helps you guys have um, a good like work-life balance is that you guys very much have discussed and stay within your roles? Yeah, and, and you know, to be open and honest with each other, and sometimes that's hard too, because sometimes he gives me feedback where I'm like, hmm, <laughs> that hurts. Thank you for telling me, you know, uh, yeah, just, yeah. Fly your zone, man. Fly your zone. Sometimes he leeches into my zone and I have to be like, oh, hold on there. You know, <laughs> no, um, no, Get no, no. There. exactly. Exactly. And you know, I, I think though <laughs> my dad famously has always told me this is hilarious. There can only be one alpha oh, yes. in every relationship, you know? So, um, knowing who that is, is important. And you know, he's just a kind, loving human and the team loves him. And, uh, but you know, it's challenging. I feel like you're too. describing my marriage also. <laughs> I've <laughs> only been it. married for like, not very long, but <laughs> I'm like, I relate to you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. My husband's like a golden retriever. Everyone loves him oh, and yeah. blah, blah, mm -hmm. blah. Mm -hmm. Yep. Yeah. It's the same. I am. Yeah. Yep. Same. It's a different boat. Yeah. Same, same. Yeah. And, and he doesn't get rattled. I get, you know, some, some things will rattle me and he's like, 
what's so tell me why you're rattled and then I'll whoa, 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 and he's like huh okay well so like tomorrow it's done so why are you worrying about it now yeah you, you know so uh-huh. like, and you're like oh, perspective right. I just need a minute right. to think about it <laughs> yeah and you know his previous <laughs> career or I mean he's still an attorney but you know he did civil lit- civil lit- litigation defense for the like county jail and oh, the wow. sheriff's department and so He's like, man, you know, perspective nothing, is different. Yes. Everything is like yeah. easy going now. Oh, he man. Has. He's like, life is so good. <laughs> life is so good. Because that, you know, from an intensity point and the craziness he saw every day, he's like, man, th- th- nothing can rattle me here. <laughs> no, this is all different. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So you mentioned going to a Michelin star restaurant mm-hmm. and seeing what you could take from that. Uh-huh. What are you, lo- are you looking for just? Anything under the moon when mm-hmm. you go to these different places or even um, going to different restaurants mm-hmm. and places here, what are you looking for to gleam to possibly take back um, to your own business? Great question. You know, I really, I think from a service perspective or hospitality, like Marcel said, per- perspective, how do, how do I feel? How are they making me feel? Because sometimes they can make you feel anxious or nervous or irritated or how do they make you feel? And, and, and that happens the minute you walk in the door, right? Yep. Do I feel heard? Do I feel taken care of? You know, so I think when you, you know, bad service gets talked about a lot. And mm-hmm. I don't think good service gets talked about enough. No. Because no. when I get great service, it just makes me feel so good. You yes. Know? And they're really listening. Oh, it looks like you didn't eat all of your Brussels sprouts on this appetizer was everything okay? Oh, you know, they were a little overcooked. Okay, thank you so much for telling me. I'll let the chef know. And it's, I don't expect that to get comped by any means, but they're listening. They're they're actively listening and they want to make it better, right? Absolutely. So um, that is one of my things too, is if somebody comes by and there's a plate of food mm-hmm. and then somebody's barely touched, why aren't you asking about it? Exactly. I would ask about it. Right. And in my experience, you do ask about it. Right. Um, to see how you can be an improve, improve because mm-hmm. that experience could change them ever wanting to come back. Mm-hmm. And that experience too, let's say I had the duck somewhere and it was really overcooked and really dry. You know, if some if they ask, I'll say, you know, it was a little dry, blah, blah, blah. Oh, my gosh, thank you so much. But maybe they made it better for the next customer. Yeah. You know, so they're doing their job hospitality-wise because mm-hmm. you can't always fix it for the one. But for the one, yeah. To take that feedback and make it better for the rest is really important, I think. So what are some unique things? It's just a different industry for us to, um, uh, that are unique to working in the wine industry. Gosh, it's experiential. You know, you taste you're using all your senses, right? When you, when you're drinking wine, it's not just smell. It's not just taste. It's like sight, sound, you know, all of it other than sound, I guess. Um, that's the one sommelier joke. It's like, Oh, what is the wine telling you? And they're like listening. And, uh, Cause it's the only sense you're really not using. Um, but it is so experiential. Wine is an experience and from the sight to the smell, to flavor, to the finish. And then, you know, when you learn about the producers, and you see the, where the wine comes from. And, you know, the wines I sell the best, honestly, are, are from a producer. Maybe it was their salesperson who came to talk about the wines. It's about a, it's a story. There's yeah. a story behind every bottle. And, you know, maybe it's, so uh, Truchard is a, is a great Napa producer. And I got to meet, like, Mr. Truchard. And I'm like, where is he? Where is he? We're at this big wine thing. And there's, like, booths everywhere. It was in Big Sky. And I'm like looking, looking, and and the gal's like, it's him. And I go, oh, and he's like in his late seventies. He was wearing Wranglers, and a jean jacket, yeah. and his scarf. Mm-hmm. And I, you know, went over and I said, I love your wines, and and it, like gruff hand, you know, he's and, and he goes, and I said, oh, blah blah blah, I love your wines, and you do such a great job. And he goes, I'm just a farmer. Yeah, you know? and I love that story. We were just in Napa in like late November, December, mm-hmm. and we were at one of the the Hill yeah family Hill, estate. Yeah. They've got great wines. So one, the whole experience is lovely. Mm-hmm. The tasting was great. But then the owner and his son yeah. come by. The son is drying persimmons and that's what <laughs> you're getting served. And they were really good, by the way, like super good. But then he like meets us. He hugs us all before we go. Yeah. We, funny enough, like exchanged cards because I had one. But he like knew people here yeah. in Billings yeah. and, and talked about places here. And then he sends me like an email. Yeah. On Monday. Aww. Like, hey, great meeting you. Thank you guys so much. Yeah. And, you know, we shipped a couple bottles back, mm-hmm. each of us, from there. But just, and he talked about 
his grandpa, I think, or dad that was the farmer. Yeah. It's like it's his dad. Yeah. Yeah. His yeah. dad. And then the kids came back, took mm-hmm. it over and then turned it in. But yeah. just that story is so sweet. Yeah. And it's, you know, a lot, especially, you know, now in the U.S., a lot of estates are being bought and sold and blah, blah, blah. Biz- business, right? Um, they're not as many family owned businesses like that, mm-hmm. which you just, oh, like you just want to give them business, you know, because right. they're real people. They're not a corporation. They're a person. Mm-hmm. And in Italy and France, you know, a lot of the wineries, at least that we, we like to do business with certain importers, they, they're like fourth, fifth, sixth, seventh gen- generation family owned estates. So these, I just had the pleasure of meeting um, Gaia Gaia from, uh, she's a, a, they have properties in Piedmont and Tuscany and they just have bought properties down in Etna. And she's the oldest of the children. Her great grandfather was the founder, her father, you know, so she's taking yeah. over for her father and it is personal to them. Family it is legacy. so personal and they, they care so much. And she is someone that, you know, I, you know, I'm like, can I get a picture with you? You know, like, yeah. I just like on who over her because she's so amazing. And she was warm and kind and thank, thanked us for our business. And I'm just like, oh, my gosh, you know, you only so much of her wine comes to the States and anything we grab sells right away. Right. You know, it's like doing. Yeah, no problem. Can you sell us more wine? You know, um, we'll sell it. Yeah, exactly. But uh, it's just it's you know it's family and it's personal and they and they make it personal. It was personal mm-hmm. for you to get yeah. the email to say thank you. Yeah, and you're just like, gosh, this person is so busy. They thanked me. They took a second out yeah. of my day, which would probably yeah. make you, it makes you want to go back. Oh, or, I can't and, wait and to continue to buy their wine because and tell of people. that experience mm-hmm. and yeah. tell people their story. That mm-hmm. was that's a beautiful yeah. story. Yeah. I want some of those dried persimmons. They though. were honestly, <laughs> but it's like the little son. He wasn't even, I'm like, he was small, like middle school, maybe, yeah. but like he was drying them and he was there too. He was yeah. drying more and telling us about them. Oh. And I'm like, look at you, you little entrepreneur, you <laughs> so selling, cute. like just so sweet. Yeah. The family experience yeah. there, which I feel you guys have too. We went, and I've said this on the podcast already, but on a different episode, we got into the France wine tasting. Yes. And we loved it. Oh. Well, we saw Ashley's dad, who we know because he used to be on our board, which was so cute. Yeah. He's like just proud dad, oh. which is adorable. But that was such a fun mm-hmm. event. Uh-huh. Um, we loved it. We loved learning about the regions like you were talking about a little mm-hmm. earlier. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So can you talk to us about when you guys pull in those events, what that looks like and what that experience is like? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, so events are, you know, never easy, right? No, as you not. guys know, it's like, <laughs> woo, it's a lot of work. But um, with that specific event, you know, we love Chelsea LaDerriere. So she is one of the owners, co-owners of the import company, French Libations, who you got mm-hmm. to meet. And um, so we've met her throughout the years and just really, we love her, just everything about her. She's outgoing. She's funny. She has great presence in front of customers and and she has an amazing portfolio. So, you know, yeah. that helps. The wines are uh-huh. good, too. Yeah, because there's some wines that are good, and then you meet the people, and you're like, ooh, I would never have you in town. Yeah. <laughs> and, you know, so uh, so for that specific event, um, I do an event with the Symphony every January, and I was on their board for a long time. And, I, you know, I now that I'm busier with two stores and stuff, I'm trying to not – I'm focusing more. I'm trying to. So anyway, so we do a uh, virtual wine tasting with the Symphony to as their one of their annual fundraisers. And um, so every year, this was the fifth year, I think, that we've been doing it. Uh, you know, really started – during, co- well, fourth year, because we started during COVID. And we're like, oh my gosh, how are we going to I raise? remember seeing Instagram about that, like yeah. Instagram posts all yeah. over about Virtual it. Virtual was like the way to go. And then at post COVID, people are like, no, we still like that because then we can have like multiple glasses and we're at home and we don't have to drive and blah, blah, blah. So thinking of somebody who is going to be good on camera because it's virtual with the symphony. And then we always do two events to because to bring people in like a Kelsey you have to be able to do multiple things and really use their time because they're busy and they're like, man, you better have a couple of things going because one thing isn't going to cut it. And, yeah. and I get it. It's business for them to fly here, have a hotel, do all that. So we always do the event with the symphony one night and then the other night we do an event our own. So, but really I think, you know, people are curious. People want, they do want to learn about the wines. Mm-hmm. They want to know the story. Mm-hmm. Um, and that's, you know, the industry I'm in, I'm so lucky because there's so much to learn and there's, 
different stuff all the time. And, you know, so that's, you know, gosh, I'm so fortunate. I'm not doing the same thing every day. Yeah. Wishing it was different. Like, no, I mean, this producer from here, there's a new wine that came out or this isn't a region like the Volcans, like one of the Mm -hmm. wines you had where it was, um, you know, abandoned during the war and then they're replanting and redoing like indigenous oh, wow. grapes to mm-hmm. that area. And I don't know, like it's fascinating, right? That is well, fascinating. And like what you smell. And so like now every time we open a bottle of wine, Austin's like sm- doing all Smelling. the things. Oh, yeah, yeah. But like what do you smell and like what your senses are? Yeah. And so she really talked about that. And it's not, it's like in the wine, but in the soil that it's grown in, which Absolutely. is so fascinating. Yeah. Do you have, when people are maybe just out shopping at city Mm -hmm. vineyard are there things that you recommend when you're or maybe they're traveling Mm -hmm. but they're wanting to buy some wine Mm -hmm. what are some things to look for you know i always ask people um are you eating is this for a meal because really the wines you're going to choose to go with food are going to be different sometimes then i'm just oh no i'm just my my girlfriend's coming over we're gonna watch netflix and eat popcorn cool i got a i I got a wine for you um oh my gosh no i'm i'm doing this uh grilled pork loin yada yada here on my sides this is how i'm preparing it okay you're gonna want something from rioja you know really helping them because that that marriage between food and wine when you have it just goes together and they always say what grows together goes together so Mm -hmm. if you're in tuscany and you know you're gonna want red tomato and all the, these things that go with these specific wines. Yeah. So, um, cause you don't want the pairing to contrast where you let's, I like to use Cabernet, like a really dry cab that sucks all the moisture out of your mouth. You don't want to have a dry piece of chicken with that. No, you, you have don't. no salivation happening. You're thirsty. <laughs> um, you know, you're like, you drink more wine, and, you you drink more wine and you can barely get it down. You like, they go, and it's like puff, like it's like <laughs> dust coming out of your mouth. Um, so that, you know, not, it's not a good pairing. So you would want like a juicy red to go with like chicken or things like that, like a Gamay or a Pinot Noir, um, even like a, like a Syrah to go with some meats like that. And if you have like a steak, like a ribeye or anything with a little bit of fat on it, that is awesome for like a dry Cabernet. And those things go really well together because you're going to have like the juicy bit, a little fattiness on the meats and you take a drink of your dry wine and it cleans your palate out. Then you go back for another bite, makes you eat more. And then the more you eat, you're going to want to drink more wine. So that's like, it's like a good little Mm -hmm. pattern. Yeah. It's a good little pattern. Yeah. Well, you kind of hinted at it before just now, um, but you're opening a second location. Yes. Tell us how that is going. Oh man. I think Bozeman is its own animal too. Um, <laughs> holy We're sm- glad we had you first. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'm just going to say that. Yeah, yeah. Um, you know, I honestly, I don't think if I had done business in Bozeman before I wouldn't go because it's so intimidating from like a labor perspective Yeah, and just your overhead, rent, all, all the things. It's hard to um, But yeah, we're so excited. I feel like we you know, it's going to be a little smaller store bar is going to be a little bigger. Um, you get better as you go. So your second store should never be exactly like, like your, your first, first store. store yeah. Yeah, yeah. You should try to do things a little teeny little changes to, you know, make a big impact. Hopefully. Oh, and you awesome. said June. June. Ish. Yeah. June ish. Yeah. June 7th is like the day I'm in quoting the day. Um, <laughs> you can't see them. She did air quotes. <laughs> yeah, I did air <laughs> quotes. She did air <laughs> quotes. Looking at So Bozeman, that's like looking ahead. Mm -hmm. What are some trends that you foresee shaping like the future of just hospitality? Mm -hmm. You know, with, we talked in just our other one about AI Mm -hmm. and some of that new technology, Mm -hmm. but also just other trends you you are Mm -hmm. seeing that will be popular in 2024, 2025. Yeah. Yeah. Um, From the uh, wine perspective, I think you guys maybe have heard about like the natural wine movement and all that. So, um, you know, People, they're not adding any sulfites into wine. So, uh, you know, it's, you know, might not be good by the time you have it. Right. So that, that, I think that whole part of the industry is really, there's, I I don't know, big waves and people doing big things. But I think a good thing that is happening that really originated in, uh, in Europe and France and Italy is the biodynamic wine movement and all organic wine movement. So, it, you know, in certain areas, you cannot use herbicides, pesticides, and all the craziness for, for growing, right? So, oh, nice. Um, so it's a cleaner wine, right? Mm-hmm. It's not natural, and I'm, you know, air quoting natural, but, um, you know, it just makes a better wine. And, and you know, I don't want to drink something that might have had 
pesticide. Chemicals it, it, on yeah. it. You're not, because you're consuming that, you know, you're yep. drinking it. So that's, you know, l- we're seeing so many more producers domestically that have stopped and they're now organic. They're, you know, furthering into the um, biodynamic. I, I know it's a hot topic and I probably shouldn't bring it up. I'm going to anyway. Uh, you know, global warming is a big deal in the wine industry. Mm-hmm. Places are getting hotter. There's certain regions that cannot grow the same grape varietals because it's too warm. Because oh, those varietals mm-hmm. don't do good in those conditions. So yeah. climate is a huge deal in uh, in the industry. So, you know, uh, uh, Gaia Gaia talked about it. And, you know, she they, they're buying land. So she's in Piedmont and Tuscany. And there's certain areas in, in, in uh, uh, I would say, rows and crops that they're having to change the varietals because it's too warm or, you know, yeah. things like that. They're also bought, they bought land down in Etna, which is Sicily volcanic soil and in different climate down there because they're worried that some of their where they have other lots and in, 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 in plantings are going to be too warm and they're not going to be able to produce great wine right okay. and then their wine is changing too I exactly assume the type of wine they're able to sell exactly. is a different at a different price all those things so wow um her father is is a innovator and he is just a dynamic fearless man and so he he gosh I think she said eight years ago they bought their property in Etna and they're so starting kind to plant. of already they they see it coming you know they're way ahead of it because they're farmers oh, yeah it, it directly affects them uh so yeah so climate change people changing the varietals that you're drinking um you know some things we're not going to be able to get some prices are going to be so high it's like I can't drink that anymore because for them to produce it at the quality they do we just you know, it, they can't do it. There is a ceiling, I think, for people of what the what they're willing to spend for things they actually drink. Yeah. Wow. Do you have a good selection of organic um, wines? Yeah. So we have a huge non-domestic section. So Italy, France, we have so much French wine, and uh, the specific region of Burgundy in France, my husband like, is a total geek about, <laughs> which we have way too much of that, which we won't in Bozeman because we don't have the space. So, and he's fighting with me about that. But anyway, uh, but yeah, yeah, and we love. Um, you know, those wines are more rustic. They have a different story. They taste different. Um, you know, there's domestically, you can inoculate wine with sugar to change the flavor profile. Um, there's some producers that do it a lot here. And, uh, you know, that's not good for your body. So the cleaner wines you drink, the lower sugar wines you drink, it's just better for you. Good to know. That's I'm a very sugary wine drinker, so I'll have to... Rain it in. <laughs> but you drink Moscato. So, yes. yes, it's it's being inoculated with sugar. But depending on the producer, um, like Tintero, the one we pour by the glass in the lounge, it's uh, imported My by Kermit Lynch. My favorite one. They don't add any stuff to it. Yes, they inoculate it with sugar a little bit to maintain that flavor profile. But they're not spraying it. They're not. It's still an organic wine. You're drinking an organic oh, wine. Oh, look at that. I do so love keep your... keep drinking it. Yeah. <laughs> look at you. I do love your international section Spain we took a trip to Spain Italy we haven't been to France yet but I mean we I think when we go in there that's where we go first or those international Mm -hmm. sections before Mm -hmm. we do domestic Mm -hmm. is Mm -hmm. that good or bad I don't know but that's where we gravitate towards and I think you know one of the benefits we have with the space we have at City Vineyard is we get to you know show you different things that maybe you don't look for Mm -hmm. you know Uh, we get to have that variety when my husband and I took over the business eight years ago. Um, we didn't have a lot of non-domestic stuff. Like the domestic set was huge and that was the bulk of what we sold. And, you know, now honestly it's 50, 50 or even a little more non-domestic than to the domestic stuff. So where before it was probably 80, 20, 80% of what we sold was domestic mm-hmm. and 20% was non-domestic. We're now, you know, we're pretty much split down the middle. Oh, nice. Um, so uh, is it better? I, I, I can't say it's better, but, you know, I think that having a good global variety of wine is Absolutely. really important because, you know, you might have one Greek blah, blah, blah that you're like, oh, I love this one wine from Greece and there's nothing like it here. Yeah. So get them what they want. I and everybody has a different palate too. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Well, and it's so lucky for us to have you guys in Billings and be able to go and buy these oh, wines. Thank and you have that experience where and like, the meats and cheeses yes and yes, we yes. know where you're i mean going to that tasting we went to mm-hmm. it's like this is the person they work with to import these wines yeah. like it's legit it's coming in and just mm-hmm. being able to you know be part of that yeah. at a small scale was just so special and we loved it we can't wait for the next thank one thank you so. and you know it's because of people like you we can do those events 
right? You know, you can build a palace, but if nobody comes, you just have this palace, right? <laughs> no, you know? I feel like so, you, I'm like, I swear in December and January, I was there like every week. I'm like, well, here I am again. <laughs> good, good. Thank <laughs> so, you. Thank you. But, you know, it's, it's, and, and the customers, you know, dictate, you know, what you carry and what you pour by the glass and yeah. really listening to them. And you, we're so fortunate, you know, people I know in other markets are like, oh, Billings, uh, you know, that's Easter month, you know, blah, blah, blah. and I'm like, man, the, our customers are so well-traveled, whether it's to Santa Barbara or Napa or wherever, or to like Piedmont and to Tuscany and to Spain. Mm -hmm. And then they come back and then they're like, I want these wines from where I was. And so we're so lucky that some of the wines we bring in are by request from good customers. Mm -hmm. Hey, you have to try this. Can, can we get it? Can you get it? And then you get it. And you're like, oh my gosh, thank you. So-and-so. And we are killing it with that wine. And it's like, oh yeah, no problem. I, I just wanted to be able to drink it. You, you know, <laughs> yeah. so, um, the customers help us so much. So City Vineyard isn't like a, you know, Becky, Abby, Ryan thing. It's a, this is a billings thing. Mm -hmm. Like, cause the customers dictate what we do and how we do business too. Oh, I love that. Well, thank you so much for being with us today. Um, we like to end each episode with a set of rapid fire questions. Ooh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> um, we're going to take a quick break for a quick sponsor message. Hi, this is Shannon Hahn with the Department of Transportation in the Small Business Program. I'm here to talk to you today about the DBE and the SBE programs. The DBE program is for disadvantaged small businesses. So that's minority and women. And the SBE program is for non-minority and non-women-owned businesses. These programs provide business assistance to contribute to the growth and self-sufficiency of businesses in the transportation industry. Services include business skills, development, training, networking opportunities, bonding assistance, and much, much more. So if you're a highway-related business, please go to our website. You'll see what the eligibility criteria is at mdt.mt.gov. You can call our 1-800 number, which is 800-883-5811. So give us a call. Thanks. Are you ready? I'm ready. I should have had a glass of bubbles before this, but I'm ready. <laughs> I know. I was like, we should have had this know, at 4 had. p.m. I, I, I had to brought the bubs next time. Next time. <laughs> I told Marcel, I was like, we need a to-go podcast recording like, equipment so that we could go to places and do the ed go episodes to the too. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, I will jump right in. What okay. is your go-to wine? Your favorite go-to wine? Oh, I'm a diva. I love champagne. Ooh. I love bubbles. So if I, you know, obviously champagne's more expensive. So if I can't have that, then I go to like a Cremanta Alsace or a Cava from Spain. Um, yeah. Uh, bubbles, clean, dry, bright, refreshing. Love it. I love that. I like bubbles too. Um, what gets you going in the morning? Like, how do you start your day? Oh my gosh. So this is terrible. And I know I shouldn't be doing it, but uh, I, I have all the reports from the day before the auto email. So I literally turn off my alarm and then open my email and read my reports uh, from the previous day for the store in the bar. Well, I mean, terrible, you're, you're I know, the but. owner, but so you <laughs> yeah. have to, you have to know your numbers. Yeah, exactly. So, and then I get up I'm like, read it, process it, get out of bed, <laughs> start rocking and rolling. Cause then your yeah. brain turns on, you know? Yeah. You're like, so. okay, here's my actions for yep. today. Yep. So are you still a coffee person or oh, did you like, yes, okay. yes, okay. yes. Okay. <laughs> love it. Love it. I was like, I, since you worked, mm -hmm. I would assume. Yes. Yes. Fun. Um, as an entrepreneur, what's the best piece of advice you've ever received? Oh gosh. I always give the hard ones. Yeah. I'm in sorry. God, we trust all others bring data because you can feel a certain way, feel it. But what are the numbers telling you? Look at the numbers too. Don't just go off feel. All right. I in really God, like we that. trust all others bring data. All others bring data. I like that. Uh, last thing, where can people connect with you, find you, find City Vin? Yeah, great. Uh, so we have Instagram. Uh, I, gosh, I don't even know the handle. I don't have my phone on me, but it's, it's City Vineyard Wine. So City Vineyard Wine, you'll find us, um, obviously with Facebook. We have cityvineyardwine.com. We do a newsletter that has all of our current events coming out. So, um, sign up, go to cityvineyardwine.com sure sure and sign up for the newsletter. And then that way, um, any events and, you know, new stuff that's happening, uh, it keeps you posted and up to date on what we're doing. Awesome. And you guys do beautiful gift baskets or, oh, and things yeah. like that too, so that yes. people can connect with your team to 
curate a beautiful basket if needed. Absolutely. And we do a lot of corporate baskets for businesses. So um, big, large orders where they bring in their swag, whether it's a mug or what have you, hats, things like that. And then we build the basket. So it's very, it's not a city vineyard branded basket. It's a, you know, XYZ bank basket and they order 30 or, you know, 50 or whatever. Um, so we, you know, definitely love that custom stuff that really helps those cus- customers give, you know, get their brand yeah. out there in front of their customers. Awesome. awesome. Well, thanks, Abby. This well, has been a ton of fun. Awesome. Thank you guys so much. I appreciate your business. Yeah. yeah. Well, Thank we you. love going to you. And all of our listeners here, if you're looking for a wonderful place to have brunch or if you're looking for a amazing wine for your dinner, stop by City Vineyard. Thank you. We hope you enjoyed this episode. Make sure you are subscribed to The Vault at 201 North Broadway, wherever you podcast, including YouTube. Connect with us on Facebook at The Vault at 201 North Broadway and Instagram at The Vault underscore 201. Don't forget to visit us at thevault at 201.com and subscribe to our newsletter. We will see you next time. Bye. Thank you to Big Sky Economic Development for supporting The Vault at 201 North Broadway. Big Sky Economic Development provides leadership and resources for business creation, expansion, retention, new business recruitment, community development, and workforce development. Learn more at BigSkyEconomicDevelopment.org.